what happened to me, inability to collect child support, sex discrimination on my first job, being the victim of sexual assault, having to get an abortion, almost dying as a result. And when I became an attorney, this was not just my bad luck. She's won over a quarter billion dollars of lawsuits specific to sexual harassment. Yeah, but what right. about you? Are you a feminist? Absolutely not. Can't my wait to find out I'll give why it to you. you believe in second class citizens. I don't believe in second class citizens. I know you're a true believer. No, but what, uh, it's not a true believer. You, but you are a true. Yeah, I a am a true believer in empowerment of right, women but, and minorities but, but here's, here's, and equal rights. So one of the things I like to do is I like to sit down with people that are the best at what they do. Today, we're sitting with somebody who is known as women's victims' rights attorney. She's won over a quarter billion dollars of lawsuits specific to sexual harassment. Uh, she's known for bullying bullies. And every time she comes on camera, men are shivering all over the place, wondering who's going to be next. So with that being said today, Gloria Allred, thank you so much thank for making you. the time Nice to for see us. you Appreciate and nice you to meet you, Patrick. Pleasure meeting you. You got a wonderful documentary out, by the way, that came thank out. Thank you very much. Seeing All Red, which is now streaming yes. on Netflix. I'm just very thankful to the wonderful job done by the producers and support by Netflix. It's a powerful story. They wanted to do a story of, uh, you know, my battle for women's rights, which I've been battling for 42 years with the leading women's rights law firm in the United States, you know, what I really wanted to do was to help to empower uh, women and minorities, individuals who are lesbian or gay or transgender as well, <clears throat> to stand up against injustice, to know that they don't have to suffer in silence, that they can, that they have legal rights, they can assert those rights, and that we can protect those rights and we can vindicate those rights, sometimes in a confidential settlement, sometimes in a court of law, Sometimes by just supporting them if they wish to speak out publicly and have their voice, depending on what it is they want to say and what their goals are. And the point is, Patrick, that, you know, women and minorities, for the most part, are not going to suffer in silence anymore. They are going to stand up. They are going to make those who have wronged them, who have inflicted injustices on them, accountable in some way. Because I always say, Patrick, that the cost of the wrong should not be borne by the victim. It should be borne by the wrongdoer. And we're here to make sure that the wrongdoers face consequences and they have to pay the cost of the wrong, not the victim. You know, I've heard you say that so many times. And one of the things when I watch you, Gloria, and the, and the part that I have uh, respect for you, politically, we may be in complete different uh, sides politically uh, mm -hmm. ourselves. I live in Texas. I used to live in California 25 years. There are, well, things I, there, are, there are things I agree with you, there are things I don't agree well, with. Well, I hope but you that's agree not, with equal rights for women under the law. This is the part I do want to make the point with you. You know, you, you have a love-hate relationship. Men, you know, some men are, oh my gosh, she just wants to go out there and get the media, and she just wants to get the media attention, and that's all she wants to do. Yeah, and I know there are some men who would like women to, to be silent. But, but I want to say something about that. But Gloria, I want to say something about that. And then there's the other side that women are glad that you are defending them. And I want you to know, for me, I have a mother, I have a sister an older sister, and I have a daughter now. Mm -hmm. I have a two-year-old daughter now. So for me to know if anybody was representing my daughter, it's going to be you. Thank you. If I'm going to call anybody to represent my daughter, it's going to be you. But going back to it. I felt there was a but coming. This is the but. Okay. I think you're a true believer. I am a true and, believer. And, and I think you're a true believer for reasons that we talk about on this channel a lot is because of life-changing events that happened to you. And then... Gloria becomes Gloria. Single parent, you know, supporting a little girl, teaching full time at Benjamin Franklin High School, commuting two nights a week from Philadelphia to New York to earn my master's degree at New York University, and also teaching two nights a week at the Cerebral Palsy Foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, the other two nights commuting by train to New York. It was, you know, quite a challenge in those days, but when you're in your 20s and you know you have a responsibility, you have to do what you need to do and to make it in this world. And this world is not easy, but you know, I, I just assume responsibility for my daughter and I'm glad that I did. More power to you for doing that. But the part I want to get to Nobody was gonna die and leave me any money. Well, you so were gonna definitely- gonna have you, to, you know, teach full time, at all boys, yeah. high school. Watts. Uh, yeah, it was all African-American high school, and but the kids were wonderful. And even though they were poor, you know, Poor kids also want to have an education. They want to do better in this world. 
And what, so they what, have what, a right to well-qualified teachers. What caused you to have these beliefs? Like if you go back, growing up with, with your parents, I know your dad was a salesperson, your mom was a stay-at-home mom, and mm -hmm. your dad was a hard-working man going door-to-door, -door, the whole yeah, story. Yeah, door-to-door salesman, hard life. Where did you form your political beliefs? Well, when you say my political beliefs, you mean my belief that women should be treated with respect and dignity and, and be afforded equal rights under the law, that your daughter, your two-year-old daughter, should not be discriminated against on account of her gender in education, in employment, sure. yeah. in business, or anywhere else, and that she should be afforded, afforded equal rights under the law. Is that what you mean? That she shouldn't be the victim of injustice, I don't think sexual most people violence? Would, I don't think most people would disagree with that. I think most people well, would support that. Well, where did I that. form those? You know, I guess uh, it goes back to my life experience. And when I understand that what happened to me as a woman, inability to collect court-ordered child support on time or in the amount that was ordered. Sex discrimination on my first job, Kimball Brothers Department Store being paid less because I was a woman than a man was paid for the same or similar job, being the victim of sexual assault, having to get an abortion when it was illegal for doctors to provide them, uh, even though it was not illegal for me to get one, almost dying as a result of you know an unqualified man who did the abortion and then wasn't responsible afterwards and almost having bled to death. Well, it's my own experience. And when I became an attorney, I began to become aware this was not just my bad luck. Okay, there were systems and laws which caused me harm. Abortion was illegal because there were certain men in Congress that decided they were going to impose their own religious agendas and force women to have illegal abortions, and many were maimed and almost died, and some did die, because that's what they did, uh, because there were laws that were inadequate to force fathers to pay child support, to force women onto welfare, because they weren't enforcing the laws for fathers to pay for the support of their children, so the taxpayers had to do it. You know, I became aware of the rampant nature of sexual harassment on the job and sex discrimination, which causes women to be in a no-win situation uh, and earn less than men when they're trying to support their families as well. So on and on, I saw it was pervasive, it was severe, it was harmful to women, and I decided, you know what, there's something we can do about it, and we are going to do something about it, and we have. So that's what happened. So That's so, what happened. So let me ask you, so the event in 1966, if, it, if that doesn't take place, would you be an attorney today? Where we are today, for all of us, is the product of every choice we've made in our lives, and some that have been made for us. So all I can say is I feel blessed to be able to be an attorney and to help to fight injustice against women and minorities, Sometimes if bad things happen, you know, you wonder, well, okay, well, why me? And the answer comes right. back, well, why not you? Uh, because so many people suffer injustices. And really, I, I've come to think that maybe there's a purpose that we don't know at the time for suffering. But rather than just kind of be get, get involved in depression, which is rage turned inward, I believe taking that rage and using it as a source of energy, turning it outward to win change for others so that others don't need to be victimized and suffer in that way. So I say to women and minorities, don't just turn it inward. In fact, I would discourage you from thinking of, you know, drugging yourself mm -hmm. uh, to relieve the depression as a way of tranquilizing yourself out of your anger and just feel the pain and take it, move it outward, and become transformed. And that's, I talk about that in the film, Seeing All Red, that you can go from being a victim, transformed into a survivor, transformed into the highest level, which is a fighter for change. That's what I encourage, because anger can be a very useful emotion if it's channeled in a positive way. It then becomes empowering and contagious, empowering to the person who knows, wait, it's like, I can do something to make change here, to win change. And it's contagious because family sees that person often as a role model. Mm -hmm. 
and then they become change makers in their own community in the world. Well, you've definitely inspired a lot of people, that's for sure. I mean, you are a champion for women across the country. When your name comes up, people are glad you're there to be a voice. And you've set the great example, obviously, with your daughter as well, Lisa Cantina. She's doing a similar thing as and well. And my granddaughter. And your is granddaughter, also a which is amazing yeah. to see that taking place with the yeah, tradition. Yeah, I sent her to law school. Yeah. That's I encourage her to be a lawyer. Gloria, what is the word feminism to you? Well, the dictionary definition is really very simple. It's a person who believes in equal rights for women with men, legally, socially, politically, and economically. So for I say, well, then you're either a feminist or you're a bigot because you either believe in equal rights for women with men or you believe that women should be subordinated as second-class citizens and not enjoy equal rights under the law for women with men. So which are you, Patrick? So I think the question would be, the word liberal was different 50 years ago than the world liberal is today. Yeah, but right? what about so, you? Are you a feminist? Absolutely not, because I'll explain to you really? what a feminism is. And so what's the way, your daughter's but, name? But the way you cornered me and you said bigot, I could also corner you as well, because I think, and I'll, I'll give you my point of view, my perspective. Oh, I can't my wait mother, to find out why you. you believe in second class citizens. I don't believe in second class citizens. In our company, we have 6,700 agents. I'll give you a stat here. Okay, well, you can well, say, minute, you know, I like women, we employ women, but that's really not an answer. We're 54% women, though. But that doesn't matter, okay? My question to you is, do you believe in equal rights for women with men? And you still have not answered that. Equal right for what? As equal the... rights for women with men under the law. Equal employment opportunity. Sure. Equal opportunity yeah. in education. Equal opportunity but for women in business. it's not black and white like that. It is not black and white it like the glory. It is fairly black and white. I don't white. think it is. You know, for me, it's like but you're either you pregnant or you're not pregnant. But I'll give you an idea why There it's really not. is no in between. And that's the way it is with feminism and equal rights. So if you want to have that debate, can we have the debate? Go ahead. Women work 2,000 hours a year on average. Men do 2,500. Statistically, you can't compete. That's not the, that's not the issue. My question is... I'll repeat it. Under the law, should women enjoy equal rights with men? Absolutely. Okay. So then uh, what about economically? Sure. What about socially? Sure. What about politically? Sure. And you've already answered legally. But so we why have that do you already. want to say you're well, we not? we have that already. No, we don't have of that already. Of course we have that already. No, but I'm, let's go back how to you, then how why you don't want to be called a feminist when you, by your answers to my questions, have just filled the definition but no, that's, of a feminist no. as a person who believes in equal rights. No, because I'll tell you. You're running a, away from it no, for some reason. No, it's not. Far from it. From the moment I walked into your office, mm -hmm. I saw seven women working here. I didn't see one guy. Oh, well, my, so you, met, you say, have not met my but, partners. But your Wait. partners are men. But I, I know your two partners are men. Okay. I, I understand that. No, it's not just two ha partners. I have more than two partners. Have you represented men before? Of course um, I have. Many, many times. And we have clients who are men now. How many sexual harassment cases were men? Well, actually, we've had a number of sexual harassment cases. I'll tell you about two. Are majority men or women? I'll tell you about Are two. Are majority men or women? Are majority of what? Your sexual harassment cases. Okay, let, I'll answer that. But I guess you didn't want to hear about the cases where we represented men who were sexually harassed. Because sure. you then skipped over and went to a different question. So which question would you like me to answer? Address either one of them. Okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll go to your first one. Sure. And then if you'd like to restate your second one, I'll be happy to answer that one as well. Because both are fair questions. Okay, so yes, we represent men. Two of our very famous cases, and we have more, but I'll talk about two right now. One had to do with a man who was sexually harassed by another man on the job. And it was very severe sexual harassment. This is before the Supreme Court of the United States decided many years ago, sexual harassment law does cover men as victims as well as women as victims. But we took the risk even before the Supreme Court made that clear. And we represented a man and we sued another man for sexual harassment on the job. We won uh, more than a $5 million verdict for our client, a man who was sexually harassed by another man. We had another case where a man, our client, was sexually harassed, he alleged, by a woman. This was at Vaughn's grocery store, a well-known chain in Southern California. He alleged that he was sexually harassed by her and that he was retaliated against when he protested the sexual harassment. Uh, the jury found, after we tried the case, that no, he was not sexually harassed by the woman supervisor, 
but that he was retaliated against because he protested what he believed was sexual harassment. He had a reasonable belief that he was. Right. And we won $16 million for our client, the male victim of retaliation. Those are just two of the cases. Now, I think your second question is, well, do you do as many sexual harassment cases where men are victims as you do where women are victims? Is that a fair statement of your question? Sure. Okay, without the tone. Having said that, the answer is, of course not, because most victims of sexual harassment are women, and most of those who sexually harass them are men. Now, why is that? because that's the way it is in the workplace overall, where women are generally at the bottom or the middle, and men are in power over those who are powerless. By choice of education. Well, this is the way it is. When you say by choice in education is also... Most most of it's education, nursing. It's not just education. Please, let's not demean women to think that they're not as educated as men. Far from it. That's not what I said. No, no, that's by education. I I said by the direction they take on their education, their career route. Okay, well... Most career route they take is towards that. And it's it's towards what? Towards education, wanting to become teachers, wanting to become nurses. And therefore what? I don't understand. Therefore, what? There's not a major opportunity there to move up as it does on a different route you go to. Okay, well, I mean, I totally disagree with that. Yeah, I I mean, yes, women have been socialized into job ghettos, if that's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. I said in a different way. Segregated job ghettos. Yes, most teachers are women. Most nurses are women, uh, you know, and this kind of thing. And we are now opening up the job ghettos so that men can also be nurses. And that's good because that will help, you know, men are considered to be of more value in our country. So therefore, the pay of female nurses should go up because now since men are doing it, it'll be considered more important work as well. It's not because of that. You know, there have been men who, I mean, women have been discriminated against. They have not been hired for the top. They can see through the glass ceiling, but sometimes they can't get right breakthrough. So it's a complicated kind of situation, but let's not suggest somehow because of some factor other than there is discrimination and women. Now, for example, what we're trying to do is educate women and encourage them into science and math fields. Where in that's the, good. That's the STEM that's program great. where, you know, that's, that's many girls that's... have not been you know, encouraged to study science and math. Therefore, there are more men in the scientific area than women. So your daughter should be encouraged. You know, if she wants to be a teacher, that's great. We need teachers and we need good teachers. Right. But if she wants to, let's say, become a scientist or a mathematician. I have no problem with that. God bless her. Let's provide her with that opportunity. And but I'm saying and there's also been discrimination in those areas. I, I have done discrimination cases you think in every you area think, of life, but sports, think, business, education, the religious world, the entertainment you world, you name it. Gloria, please know I know you're a true believer. No, but what, uh, it's not a true believer. You, you are it, a true, yeah, I a, am a true believer in empowerment of right, women but, and minorities but, but here's, here's, and equal rights for them. But here's my challenge. Let me let me explain something to you. OK, so uh, I, I run a sales organization. OK. So running a sales organization, here's what I have to watch. I used to work with a lady who was my boss, okay? And she ran the business with her husband. She was the alpha, he was not. And we all responded to her. You're an alpha, absolutely all day long, times 10 at the highest <laughs> level. Okay? And you're still sitting here anyway, you're very brave. I but, wanna but no, here's, congratulate here's, you but on here's your here's my point to you, I'm an alpha, okay, you're an alpha. Right, good, the right. point I'm trying to make to you is the following. I think feminism, this is what it does. I think this is what feminism, and this is my challenge with it. This is why I don't consider myself a a feminist. Mm -hmm. This is where it goes. I think what we're trying to do is, this is the part that gets confusing. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make men and women equal. No problem. Under the law. Under the law. No problem. However, for me to say 20 men who are not alpha can come and deal with you, it's mathematically impossible. Well, I don't know what you mean, deal with you're, me. I People deal with me all the time. Well, you're not easy to deal with. Well, I mean, you're very difficult you know, to deal with. You know, we have a that. wonder, I don't know about that, but I will say this. We have a wonderful saying in the women's movement that a man of quality 
is not threatened by a woman of equality. Absolutely not. Why so, would it, they you know, be? if they can't deal with me, that is their problem. I, I'm it's with not you. mine. I'm with you. My number one earner is a woman who okay. kills it. Okay. I'm all, all right. about it. So what is but your I, what is your question in I, reference to being alpha or not? You asked me a question about feminism, if I'm a feminist or not. Oh, That's yes. My May challenge. I ask you, so if you're not a feminism, yeah. are you a male chauvinist? No. You're just obviously not comfortable with either label. I'm not, no, no, I'm not comfortable so, with either so label. So we don't have to label each other, but, you know, the point is, you know, women... And minorities should be treated with respect and dignity and afforded their rights. Okay, that's respect it. Respect and dignity. Because, afforded. you know, it's a, it, a, a lack of rights is very dangerous to a woman's economic health, her physical health, her social health, all of that, financial This is why health. we're America. I lived in Iran for 10 years. Where? Iran. Oh, years. okay. Well, all right. And so we then you know, Iran there's because a... they don't offer what the freedom is offered here in America. Well, you know and, what? And the amount it's of freedom. Not to ma- it's not just that we're offered the freedom. We have a right to that freedom of course. under the Constitution, under the laws of our land. We still have a long way to go on that. I'm not, in many ways, we're in a lot better but like shape. What you're saying right now is what you're saying when you said, I think the STEM system, where we're trying to encourage you know, the ladies to get into math and all that, I think that's all good. Not just, oh, yeah, I don't, by the way, use the word ladies. I, it's okay if you want to use it, just because you know, people say, well, why don't you like the word la- lady? Don't, why don't you want to be called a lady? Well, because you're not my lord and I'm not your lady. Mm-hmm. As a lady, then they think they have to treat her specially, and they don't want a lady as president of the United States, but a woman is okay. So don't be afraid of the W word, which is woman. And also, we don't even have to refer to our gender at all, like we don't have to refer to people's races, because we're just all human beings. And for me, Ron, I mean, if I started to decide to use gender, I'd, I'd be in a whole different place. If I the know. last person doesn't need to worry about gender and race, yeah, but, it's myself. but see, now you're yeah. not afraid to deal with me, so men should be secure and look at you and say, look, we shouldn't be afraid either. You know what? Because if they have nothing to, if, if they've done nothing wrong to women, they, they do not have to fear me. Of course. If they have hurt women, yes, maybe they do have something to fear. Gloria, my issue isn't with you. I think you're a true feminist towards your belief system is. I think there's a lot of propaganda out there that's pinning men versus women, and that's a whole different story. Well, and there's a propaganda that's, you know, well, and sometimes you're whites are against African Americans and all that. But you're comfortable that. with all the propagandas of pinning men against women, and you know, I, am I comfortable with become, propaganda? No. Do am men, I am I comfortable with the truth? Yes. Truth matters. There's a value to truth. Truth is fine. Yeah. It's not only fine; it's necessary, and we're losing the ability to know what truth is anymore because we have people in the White House like the president's attorney saying that somehow truth is relative, which it's not. But that's on both sides. If you it's think not for a moment, on both sides. If you think there is for truth a moment, and there is lie. You're saying the Democrats don't lie? No, I, I didn't know what both sides meant. You, I mean, politics, okay. left I'm and right. I'm saying it's not between Democrats and Republicans. Right. It's between the truth and a lie. So let me ask you, what is the difference between flirting and between it being considered harassment? Right. I mean, if I watch an episode with you and Morton Downey Jr., it is beautiful because you can tell there was some kind of an attraction there and you guys are pushing each other. But there was flirting. So what is flirting? What is harassment? What's the difference? Okay. well, when we talk about sexual harassment, Patrick, we're talking about the job. We're talking about unwelcome uh, words of a sexual nature uh, and or advances of a sexual nature towards someone who is less powerful. And the key word is unwelcome. It's very if clear. it's unwelcome, it, and it's severe or pervasive, that's sexual harassment. So I'll give you an example. A boss who kisses a secretary on the cheek once, that's not sexual harassment because it's not severe. It's not pervasive, okay? So that's not sexual harassment. Now, if he brings her into the office and says, take your shirt off, I want to see your breasts, okay? And then he exposes his penis to her, has her watch pornography, obviously that's sexual harassment if that's not welcome to her. That's called stupidity. Now, we talk about consent when we talk about rape. We don't use the word consent in the employment sector. We use welcome or unwelcome because let's face it, they're not on an equal playing field. She is less powerful. She's down here. He's up here. 
She's an economic captive in many ways. She needs to keep her job. She wants to be promoted. She doesn't want to be demoted. She doesn't want to lose it. So laws against sexual harassment exist because the policy of our nation, as demonstrated in the law, is that we all have a right to enjoy equal employment opportunities. Sexual harassment interferes with that right to enjoy equal employment opportunity. It is a form of sex discrimination. So no, it does interfere with women's right to be employed. That's why it's against the law. And well, it should be. That's different. If two people who are not employed go out to a bar and meet each other, okay, that's not sexual harassment if they're sitting at the bar and the guy leans over and kisses her, all right? It might be a sexual battery that nobody's going to prosecute, but it's not technically sexual harassment. So it's good that you asked that question. I'm curious. I think education is very critical in business. Let me tell you, a lot of people want to minimize sexual harassment. But what I hear from women who are contacting me every day, we're talking about severe sexual harassment. We're talking about going, you know, making a woman come to your hotel room on a business trip and then, you know, throwing her down on the bed and, you know, well, maybe she's had a lot to drink or maybe her, maybe he's drugged her drink and then he, you know, sexually assaults her. This is severe, okay? And this is wrong. It's against the law. So, you know, the hypocritical side of it is the following, okay? Again, you're a true believer, 100%. I've, I've read all your stuff on what, and I know you don't like when I say the true believer. You're a true believer. Is you're in LA right now. I'm a true believer. Yes, I, I confess to being a true believer that's, in that's, equality. That's uh, that's beautiful. So you're in Hollywood right now, okay? This well, is that, LA. This is not is Hollywood. actually Hollywood. This is Beverly Hills. But you're, it's not Beverly Hills either. It's Los Angeles. This is Los Angeles. Yes, thank okay. you. So we're in LA right now, okay? <laughs> we are less than 30 miles away from Hollywood, give or take. Could we're be close, 17 we're and close a half. to Hollywood. I okay. can see the Hollywood sign. So from some my of office. the biggest uh, 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 proponents of feminism are in Hollywood. Biggest. Well, I don't and know what you mean scream, by biggest. Maybe you mean, I mean well known. They, 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 they scream it off the top of their lungs. I don't know How that they're it's screaming, a, but they are asserting proudly that they stand for equal rights with so women if, and men. If it, why, Do you talk about men screaming or just women screaming when, both, they, when, they, when they express their views? But feminists are both. Men screaming as well. A no, but I, are men I'm as just well. saying generally screaming is a word that's applied to well, women I, and not men. I don't know if you know or not, but I scream as well. I scream a lot. Okay, well, I'm so just, I, anyway, moving I, on. Yeah, I just want you and I scream too at times. Well, I, uh, I Screaming haven't heard, is my I gift haven't as heard well. you scream, and I wouldn't describe you as a screamer. <laughs> I would describe you as a strong advocate for your point of view, sure. which I, I admire people who can strongly uh, believe advocate Believe me, I saw how you handled that gentleman that came up on the Lincoln Memorial, and I saw you handle it. And what you said, pure respect for you. And I'm 100% there aligned with what you said. So believe me, we are more aligned in many areas than you think. Well, that's good. But this is the part. So why did Hollywood hide knowing Weinstein all along? Everybody, so many people knew. Why did they hide it? Hollywood is made up of many, many different people. I don't pretend to speak for all the people who work in the entertainment yeah. industry. How do you some feel about it? Some of them were in How do you feel about it? Forget about why they hid it. Well, how do you, you feel about they, it? We're talking about many individuals mainly women, who were placed in a no-win situation. Again, back to the sexual harassment and employment scenario, which I described. These many individuals understood that he had power to provide them with an employment opportunity as an actor and that he could deny that opportunity if they didn't go along with his sexual harassment. They allege that they were afraid to say anything. They thought nobody would believe them, that they might end up getting sued, that they might never work again. So yes, fear is a weapon that often keeps the victims from speaking out. And there are real risks uh, involved in speaking out against powerful figures. So, hi, but I noticed you ask, and that was a fair question, why didn't they speak out sooner? Another really fair and important question is, why did he do what he was alleged to do, he belongs, preying on he in prison. victims, if Times. in fact he did it? And the answer to what you just said, which was he belongs in prison, is oh my gosh, the news is that tomorrow 
he is going to be arrested. That's right, yes. And I, I don't that. know if that's true, but that's what's alleged. Fair enough. Okay, it's interesting to see that taking place here. The fact that fear, men like that, I think one of the best things that's happening right now is there's examples being made that people are actually afraid. Like people are actually talking about this. this Which issue people is coming are afraid up. are you talking about? I am talking everybody in the marketplace is playing to the point where they are more cautious about things they did today. You're talking about men who are afraid about the fact that they have hurt women in the past. They may have to be accountable for Absolutely. it now. Absolutely. Okay. And I agree with you that there are many men who are in fear and rightfully so because now they know that women are a force to be reckoned with. They cannot just victimize women and then walk off and forget about the fact that they have hurt them and not be accountable. They yeah. are now being made accountable. It's called the reckoning. So I'm not going to say don't be afraid, uh, but be accountable for what you have done and then you can move on with your life. How, if you were running a company, uh, and you are running a company, but if you're running a company or an entrepreneur, how would you address this with your employees? I am an entrepreneur because I'm a partner in this law firm, all Red and Rockland. But, but meaning, but here's the difference, Gloria. You're not sitting here talking to these guys about sexual harassment because it's what you do 24-7. I'm talking somebody that's running a business that they're not in the sexual harassment business. They're okay. not a lawyer like you. Yeah, well, How would you handle it yourself? I would educate all my employees, train them about what sexual harassment is. And that doesn't mean just putting up a sign in the lunchroom that gathers cobwebs that nobody reads because it's like wallpaper. They just walk by it. Nobody bothers reading it. And it doesn't mean just saying, look at this on the internet. It means real training. It means more importantly, after the training, making sure that you're monitoring your workplace to make sure that there is no sexual harassment in the workplace. And it also means establishing a system, a protocol within the business, where employees can feel safe in reporting the sexual harassment. And finally, that they will understand that they will not be retaliated against if they report the sexual harassment and that there will be significant action, discipline imposed upon the harasser if after an investigation, he or she has found to have in fact sexually harassed the, the victim. So, yes, it's all of the above that needs to be done. Sometimes businesses are failing in that. Now they're paying the cost of that, okay? Because we sue big businesses and small businesses. And, uh, you know, and we do a lot of settlement, confidential settlements with them as well because their system is broken. So if they're concerned about their bottom line, as every business should be and is, if they want to avoid the cost of lawsuits and their executives having to sit in depositions and answering questions under oath and perhaps being embarrassed publicly, it would be less expensive to their bottom line if they would do what I just suggested and make sure there is no sexual harassment, abuse of power in the workplace. That's better for their workforce. It's better for their bottom line. It's a win-win all around. You know, I think Gloria Steinem has once said something to the effect of we are forever grateful to the men who support us. I think men and women should be judged as individuals, not like, oh, all men are this and all women are that. That's ridiculous. It's a stereotype. It never fits. Okay. So I take them individually. There are some men who really care about other women and, you know, they care about how their mothers are treated and their mm -hmm. sisters and their daughters and their aunts, and they'll stand up for them and they want them to be treated better than they have been. And then there are other men who just, you know, they, they just only care about themselves and they want to hurt women and they feel very insecure about women enjoying equal rights. So those men need to be educated. So, you know, if I sue men who have hurt women, it's a teaching moment for them. It would be better if they could be educated in other ways. And all I can say is that, you know, we, we need to move forward, and we, we need to move forward together. Do you feel we are? I think we are moving forward. I think this is the age of empowerment of women. We've seen that through the Weinstein scandal and others. Right. We've seen that through the women's marches, where women are saying, as to President Trump, for example, 
that we will not allow ourselves to be, you know, sexually assaulted. We will not allow men just to grab us and do whatever they want with us, whenever they want, however they want, whoever they are. Um, we, we are seeing women, and, and, and there are millions of people all over the world who marched on that women's march for many reasons. But for, they brought their children and their little toddlers and strollers. Some of the fathers came, older women, young women. I saw a woman, like she looked like she was 70 years old with a sign that says, I've been holding the same sign for 50 years and my arms are getting tired. Okay, so the sign is essentially, you know, respect women. Sure. So I, I do think that women and men now understand what's at stake and we are moving forward. You know, when I was living in Germany at a refugee camp with my mother and my sister, uh -huh. I, was a, I was an 11 year old boy. And they were taking good care of you, right? Who was? Your mother and your sister. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, you were taking my, care of them too. Of course, of course. And my parents got a divorce at that time. And I remember we went to a priest's place, okay? This guy's place, he was gonna give food or something like that. And I all of a sudden start, started seeing he's bringing a little bit too much drinks and alcohol to my family. I'm like, and I lost it. I was 11 years old. I my mom brings it up till today. I said, we're leaving this place. So when you say that, the protective nature of me automatically comes out to know that that does happen at times. Abuse happens a lot. That's right. And it's great to see that these women have the courage to come up because there's a, in Iran, there used to be a thing. If you were married and you got a divorce, you were like done. You know, you were done in Iran. Gloria, let me ask you, for somebody like yourself who, um, you said when I was a kid, I was always known as being persistent, right? You were persistent, I persistent. Was. I think that's the word, being persistent. And your friend said, you know, when, when Gloria, we went to school together, the boys loved her. She was very popular with the boys. And she, you know, your pictures of you when you were in high school yeah. and all this stuff. And your friend, you said you've had four friends in your life, two of your partners. One is your daughter, Lisa, and one is the friend that was... Uh, back from well, school, actually, they I know have more for friends a while. than that, but anyway. Yeah, but this, these are your words. You said four that are very, very close friends to me, but I don't have time for more friends. You have had to be so strong on camera in front of everybody. I think you cried one time when the whole equal marriage, when that came out, that was the first time you cried on a press conference. You don't typically cry on press conference. Everybody's sitting around no, I believe cries. first we cry, then we fight. I've heard you say that, yes. But the question <laughs> I have for you is, who is Gloria when you're by yourself? I mean, like... Same person. You, who is Gloria go to? You know, is it you to you? Is it, is it Gloria going to Gloria? Like, how do you keep yourself as strong as you have over these years? It's a long time to stay as strong as you've well, had. You've uh, stayed. Because the alternative is giving in to injustice. And that's not an acceptable alternative as far as I'm concerned. You know, I say in my book, Fight Back and Win, you know, that my job is to give a, right. a voice to the voiceless and power to the powerless. And hope to the hopeless. So for me to like give in, this is not an acceptable alternative. I don't, I think it's my duty to help others because I'm privileged to have become an attorney, to rise from a row house in Philadelphia with parents who had an eighth grade education. Right. My father only earned enough money to have enough food for that day. And then next day would be another day where the money would be put out just enough for the food for that day. And now to become an attorney, I have a duty as a human being to help others. I know the extent and scope against the, uh, of injustice against people who are the have-nots, who would like to have, who would like to be treated in a way that they can rise and succeed. I am the same person off camera as I am on camera. How do you refuel? I get up every day and I understand what's happening to victims because I hear from them. And I say, what? What do you do We're for gonna fun? We're gonna have to do something about what that. What is fun for you? I have a passion for justice. This is, so what I enjoy you're doing what is, I'm doing, yeah. but if, and that's I, where I'm getting to. But you, if I don't enjoy it on any day, that's okay because I have a duty. My duty is not just to do what I enjoy if I feel like it. I, I have a time limit finite time when I'm on the earth as we all do. And I take seriously every moment is an investment of me. And I want to empower people as long as I am here on God's green earth, which is a privilege and a blessing 
And this is what I'm going to do. This is what I meant to do the rest of my life. Very obvious. <laughs> Very obvious. All right, so Very I don't need that... to go away from it. That would be horrible. To take a vacation for me would be a punishment. Um, we're on the same page. I need to do this. Yeah, I asked this question because, <laughs> because some people don't find a purpose like you have found yours. So when you find it, uh, it also becomes a passion. By the way, But you so know what? Each one of us in our own lives can make that contribution to others. In different ways. Absolutely. We don't all have to do it the way Absolutely. I do it, of or you do it, or but others. But it's finding that. It's finding that. It's looking to find that. You'll know when you do, but here's the point. You should find a way to help others, to make that contribution. All of us can do it, no matter our station in life, our race, our religion, our ethnic origin, or our gender. Mm -hmm. We can all do it. We can do random acts of kindness. We can do what... Mother Jones said, don't agonize, organize. We can run for office. We can, you know, all of us can help to win change. But no one's going to give it to us. No one gives us our rights. We've what? always had to fight for them, and we will have to continue to fight for Why them. Why don't you run for office? That's not what I want to do. I am like a private attorney general, Patrick. I can see you on the debate. A private oh attorney my general gosh, that's a dangerous who needs floor to right enforce the laws. Can you see her? What says? You and, debating? Well, who needs to enforce the laws that for the protection of those for whom it was passed? Maybe, maybe there, there's there's a lot of great I, lawyers. I have that no became... interest in in running right. for office. I've had okay. people encourage me, and I thank you. I consider that a compliment. Right. But that's not who I am. This is what I want to do the rest of my Fair life. Enough. If I can do it from the great beyond, I'll try. To, I'll find a way to do it from there as well. <laughs> One topic we didn't cover, OJ. So let me ask you: When OJ happened, your belief till today? In your mind, do you believe it happened? Do you believe he did it? Where are you at? Or well, the are question you from a place? Is, are you, I'm reframing your question. Do I believe that O.J. Simpson is guilty. killed Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman, may they rest in peace? And my answer is a civil jury found that he was liable for the wrongful death. That is a verdict that was affirmed on appeal. And yes, I believe that the civil jury was correct in finding him to be liable for their wrongful deaths. So OJ killed them. According to the civil jury, that's correct. So I thank you so much for Hey, appreciate you. Appreciate you me. definitely. This was a you lot of fun. Thank you so much, alpha, Gloria. And that was a lot of fun. This was a lot Engaging of fun. Engaging with an alpha. It was yes. cool. Thank you. All right.